Hello, Active Sage here on the Sage channel, and as per usual on these update videos, we are starting at the menu screen. Now we're going to go really quickly to load, and we're going to go into advanced settings on our world. Remember, you can also access this when you're making a new world, and we're going to go to the advanced tab right there. And you'll see right down here we have view distance down. Now, unfortunately, this is a world setting, which means it affects everyone who's playing on this world, not just you. Ideally, you would have it on your actual client side so each person can have a different setting but well it's in here looks like it actually is loading in and out those asteroids for everyone anyway you can see that we have 5k for five kilometers for low-end machines and it goes all the way up to 50 kilometers for high-end machines and even then you might find yourself in a spot of bother default is 20 kilometers and that actually looks pretty good I'm, I'll play around a bit more. We'll actually go ahead and switch this to the big performance hit right here. I doubt we'll suffer too much. I'm mean, I on a pretty powerful machine right now, but if we do, well, then we know. Even on a powerful machine, you'd suffer. I don't think they did anything else here, so let's go ahead. I'm going to load up this world, and this is our world for this update video. While we're in the loading screen, I will say that they also added a splash screen, which indicates that the game is starting. I believe this is for when you are actually starting up the game. It'll actually pop up with a little something instead of saying play game on Steam, and then nothing happens. I believe that's what they actually mean by that. And so here we are in game, and with our view distance set to max, if I go into spectator and move the camera, you can see instantaneously there are a lot of little dots. And you can really tell because of the parallax between all these little asteroids and the stars in the background. And if I was to fly forward for quite some time, we'll actually be able to reach the far distance at which, there we go, you can see these are as far as out as they've been generated. But I think you'll have to agree with me that that's a pretty damn far distance. You can actually see, I think that, that it's probably not worth it, frankly, to have it set this high, unless maybe you're playing at 4K or something, because really they're microscopic dots for the most part. I mean, look, we're flying up on one, up on one, and now we can finally see its shape. Some bigger one, so of course we can see, but I mean, for your average asteroid, you're not going to be able to see them that well, just because they are so small. So, really, I'd suggest keeping your range at the default range of 20 kilometers, or maybe, just maybe, upping a little bit. Anyway, guys, that's not all that was in this update. If I turn around here, you can see we have our little programming blocks here that I'm absolutely rubbish at. But what they've done with these is, first off, I don't remember this being here before, where if you edit one, if you press escape to exit, it actually asks you if you want to save. Pretty cool that they got that. But secondly, and actually, it can, actually takes a second for your controls to come back after that, I find. But, and by I mean by is, if uh, you do that, you go into the edit, you exit it. Oh, actually, it didn't say anything that time. Maybe it was because I didn't change anything. Yeah, it's because I didn't change anything. Very smart system, isn't it? But it does take a second for your controls to come back, don't panic, like I just did. But they've also changed it so that you cannot control other blocks that are not owned by you using a programming system. So if I could knew how to program, I can no longer go ahead, install one of these on an enemy ship, and then basically tell it to find all thrusters and shut them off. Slightly unfortunate is I actually thought that was pretty cool that you could do that. The idea of being able to, if you were able to code and stuff, being able to hop on an enemy ship and then shut everything down like that. Considering you can actually install a cockpit and then actually fly an enemy ship, it sort of made sense that you'd be able to do that, but they've changed that. The other thing they've done is actually you require these little things in front of me, they require power. And you can run one of these off of one solar panel. I've put two here just because we got a few of them and whatnot, but you can see more than enough power. And I think actually if we were to go in here, it'll probably tell us our actual power draw. Uh, it looks like it's not down here at the bottom right probably because we're in creative mode right now, but one solar panel is enough to run a programming block. Also, they've set it up so they can no longer transfer stuff using these programming blocks from one inventory to another. What I mean by that is in the past, you can have a crate on your left and a crate on your right completely disconnected from one another, tell these things to transfer items from one to the other, and it would just happen. Now you actually have to have pipes for that, for that to happen. It'll still happen, of course, but you just need the prerequisite of pipes, as you would expect. Pretty cool that they're getting little bugs like that out. Moving on, we have sensor updates today. So, your sensor, good old-fashioned sensor, this thing here you might be familiar with. If we were to go ahead and actually just place one really quickly, right down there, we're going to go ahead and look into its settings, and they've updated this so it can actually tell friend from foe. So we have our default things here, detect player, detect floating object, and all this, but now it can do detect player. We're going to go ahead and take ownership of this, and we can tell it to detect owner. So it'll detect its owner when the owner walks over or detect enemy. So when it's set to detect owner, you can see it's got that green light. But if I fly away, it's no longer detecting me. It's gone to blue and it's detecting me again. 
but if I tell it to detect an enemy and not an owner, of course, it'll be detecting enemies only. And as I am friendly with it, it won't be detecting any. But of course, if we set it to be owned by, let's say, this dead NPC here, all of a sudden it's detecting me again because, of course, I'm no longer friendly with it. And also, you can probably saw there, there was the option for it to detect friend, which means anybody in your faction or allied faction. And then also, I believe the other setting, let me go back and place it down again because I can't remember the exact name of it. The other setting was neutral, so neutral targets people in no faction. So you can have turrets activate and other, all sorts of other things. And to demonstrate that, I have this little platform over here. So if we run up to right here, you might have heard a little click there. And if you look all the way down there, you can see this little thing moving towards me. That's because I have it set up so that if you are the owner of the station or a friend, so anybody in my faction or whatnot, you walk up to this point, a sensor detects you when you're on this one platform or that one, and it sends this little thing over here. It expands all these pistons. You hop on it, of course, and you walk out of that detection field, and I have it set to reverse all these pistons. Pretty damn cool. And so it'll take me all the way back to that door. Unfortunately, as you can see, I'm sort of sliding on this platform. Uh, friction not so great, I guess. I guess maybe the ideal thing would be to have you almost want to topple over, but I don't know. I think this is a pretty good solution for the time being. Maybe just have it so you stick on it in the future. But anyway, you can see it draws me all the way down here. Now, what I do have here is also a control panel. And before I do this, I'm of course going to be changing this whole thing to be owned by that NPC again to show you what happens differently. But before I do that, I'm going to explain how it works a little bit because we're not going to be able to access this again once I do so. So we're going to go ahead and find our sensors. And we have two sensors that are important here. This sensor is a third. It's unused. I can even shut it off. It won't affect anything. But we have our friendly sensor we just used, which I just said expands and, well, retracts that piston thing we were just on. And then we have this one here set up to detect enemies. And if we scroll down, you can see it's detect players, small ships, and large ships, and only neutral and enemy versions of that, whereas the friend one was set to friendly and owner. But this one, its actual actions, are set up to timing blocks because I needed it to do more than just one thing. And I didn't want it just to turn on and off group, so I couldn't just use group. So if we now go to those timing blocks that I have set in there, Timing block, enemy timing block one here is set up to set off another timing block to reverse a bunch of pistons and do some things with lights. The timing block two it's set off is just so I can have a two second delay before it activates some turrets. And then you will notice that once you leave that sensor field, it was set to activate another timing block. That's this timing block right here. And its actions are pretty much the reverse of the first one, except for it instantly shuts off the turrets instead of having a two second timer on that. So you could trick the turrets to stay on basically if you came in and out of the field quick enough. Well, actually no, the turrets would shut off right away, but then they turn back on once you're out if you got in and out of the field within the two second gap before they actually turned on in the first place. Anyway, let's go ahead and actually test that out. And we're gonna do so by selecting everything, setting them all to be owned by our enemy. And so now, if we go ahead and, oh, well, I should have flown out the back way. Hold on, I'll get her onto the front again. So now, once we walk into the field, and this has a larger sensor field that goes down the whole length of this thing, so you can't just run through it, something different will happen here. So, oh, strangely enough, it's not happened. I did set that all to foe, didn't I? It should be detecting that there is an enemy present. Yes, this is all set to be owned by someone else, is it not? Yeah, access denied. Maybe the sensors didn't take? No, they they should be set up to detect me. What's going on here? On, on. Give me a second here. All right, so I finally figured it out. It actually took me about 10 to 20 minutes. What it was, was I had it set to detect enemies and it was set to detect large stations and stuff, ships at least. Well, because it was set to detect large grids and all that, it also was detecting this bridge that was going in there because it was always detecting it for some reason, I guess, it was locking it up. That's the best I can figure out. So, you can see we, I have all this unchecked. It was detecting large ships and all this, and that was causing a heyday, I guess. I don't know. I had set it to own or that way I could fly in and out and test it. Whatever. The point is now I've got it set to detect players that aren't friendly and all that. So now if we go ahead and set this up, to have everything be my enemy. We'll save really quick because it's now working. Or it was a millisecond ago. And then let's go ahead and set this all to be owned by an enemy CC. So now I'm its enemy and we walk up just like we did earlier. There we go, everything goes bad. There we go, that one turret wasn't shooting. And as you see, as I fly down, now we have dozens of turrets that are all angry at me. Now, if we do fly back far enough here, we do fly out of the field. So you can see they've all shut down. But of course, 
in and the lights also go back to their normal color but if we fly back into the field again again the lights go red and everything's firing at me and of course if i was on its team as you saw earlier this wouldn't be happening so now you can have a whole security system set up pretty damn cool stuff bit finicky bit finicky i spent a lot of times trying to sort that out that boy oh boy <laughs> Would have been a lot more simplistic if I didn't try to have it also detecting ships and stuff, I think. Anyway guys, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this enjoyable and interesting and informative. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and I shall see you guys next time. I need to go get a drink. My throat's hurting.